Hello, I'm Martin Uflarty. And I'm Maria Guzman. We are from the Department of Public Health of the University of Liverpool. We are going to summarize a recent paper on the contribution of primary prevention medications and dietary changes to the reduction in coronary heart disease mortality in England from 2000 to 2007. The UK, as many other industrialized countries, has experienced a remarkable 60% reduction in coronary heart disease mortality since the 1970s. However, CHD remains the leading cause of premature death. Approximately one third of this initial mortality reduction was attributable to treatments and two thirds to reductions in major risk factors. The biggest contribution came from a large decline in smoking prevalence since the 1960s and more recently reductions in blood pressure and cholesterol. Mortality and risk factors have also demonstrated strong economic patterning. Socioeconomic differences in both risk factors might thus explain some of the CHD mortality gradients. Thus, any attempt to reduce the CHD burden and tackle the associated socioeconomic inequalities should explicitly consider these major risk factors. Primary prevention medications to lower blood pressure and cholesterol have therefore been standard UK health policy for almost two decades. However, while the quantitative benefits to whole population are accepted, their potential contributions to reduce inequalities are less clear. Using an extended version of the well-known impact model, our aim was therefore to analyze the falls in coronary heart disease in England between 2000 and 2007 and quantify the relative contributions of preventing medication and population-wide changes in systolic blood pressure and cholesterol, particularly exploring socioeconomic inequalities. The impact model applies a relative risk reduction quantifying previous randomized controlled trials and meta-analysis to distribute the mortality reduction among specific treatments and risk factor changes. Our outcome measure is the number of deaths prevented or postponed DPPs in 2007 relative to 2000. DPPs are defined as the difference between the number of CHD expected deaths in 2007 had CHD mortality rates in 2000 remain unchanged and the observed figures. Our results suggest that between 2000 and 2007, approximately 20,400 fewer deaths were attributable to reduction in blood pressure and cholesterol in the English population. This figure shows the number of DPPs stratified by social class attributable to changes in the population mean levels of systolic blood pressure and cholesterol in the left panel and the number of DPPs from changes in the treatment of take levels in the right panel. From this figure, we can highlight some key aspects. First, population falls have a larger effect in mortality reduction than increases in uptake levels of treatments. Most of the mortality reduction through population changes was the result of falls in systolic blood pressure rather than in cholesterol. By contrast, most of the effect of treatment of take level changes was through increments in statin use rather than antihypertensive use. The effect of population changes on mortality reduction was higher among persons in the most deprived group. On the other hand, statin uptakes apparently postponed or prevented slightly more deaths in the most affluent group. Population-wide secular changes in blood pressure and cholesterol levels help to substantially reduce CHD mortality and the associated socioeconomic disparities. Mortality reductions were, in absolute terms, greatest in the most deprived quintiles, mainly reflecting the bigger initial burden of disease. Statins for high-risk individuals also made an important contribution, but maintained socioeconomic inequalities. Crucially, it might have been a missed opportunity to further improve in diets. However, there is no simple choice between either population-based or high-risk strategies to reduce CHD mortality. Our results support the case for greater emphasis on preventive approaches, particularly population-based policies to reduce blood pressure and cholesterol. Future CHD prevention strategies should prioritize healthy diet policies ahead of medications.